Let's try to solve these two quadratic equations using factoring. And on both of these, they look very similar. Um, what I'm gonna do in both cases is we have zero on one side. I'm gonna first calculate A times C and utilize the AC method. So A times C in both of these works out to be the same, right? It's this first number times the last number. I'm gonna kind of ignore that we have a negative in front of the three. In each case, this will tell us um, some additional information for which pair we're looking for. But go with me on this, four times three makes 12. So that's the number we care about. I'm gonna go ahead and list out all the different ways we can factor 12. So one times 12, or two times six, or three times four. All give us 12. Try to be systematic as you go through that. All right, let's focus on this left one first. So as we get going on this, because we have a negative in front of our constant, because it's negative three, we're looking for the pair that we listed off to the right that's going to subtract and give us our middle coefficient. So our middle coefficient's one in this case. So which pair subtracts to give us one? Well, 12 minus one makes 11. Six minus two makes four. But in our case, four minus three makes one. So we're gonna strategically split apart our quadratic into four terms. And to do so, that middle term gets split apart using four x and three x. But because it's supposed to represent the exact same thing as our original, we have to be careful about the signs that we apply to each one of these. It's gonna go out in front. So that if you combine these two like terms back together, we get back to a positive one x. All right, so in this case, I think we're gonna to have to go positive four x's minus three x's gets us back to one x. All right, with four terms, we're gonna factor by grouping. So these first two get grouped together, the last two get grouped together. And you say to yourself, what do those first two have in common? Well, they have an x in common, so we're gonna factor out an x. Inside this set of parentheses, we think x times four x gives us four x squared. X times negative three gives us negative three x. Then we move on to the last pair, and we say to ourselves, well, for factor by grouping to work, whatever I put in this set of parentheses is gonna end up being the exact same as what's in this set of parentheses. So I'm gonna go ahead and say four X minus three has to be in that set of parentheses. Then I think to myself, all right, four X times what gives us positive four X? Well, it's a little bit tricky in this case, but it's gonna to have to be a positive one out in front here. So if you redistributed that one, one times four X gives us the four X. One times negative three gives us negative three. To wrap up our factor by grouping, I'm gonna put what's in front of our parentheses, the X, plus one in one set of parentheses. And what's inside our parentheses, four X minus three in the other set. Now we factored it, that's the hard part, right? So to finish this up, you simply set each factor equal to zero and solve these down as separate problems. So subtract one and we're done with that first one. On this one, it's gonna require a couple steps where we add three and then divide both sides by four. So X is negative, is positive three-fourths and x is negative one. Two solutions in this case. All right, very similar on this other one. A times C also gives us 12, but this time we're looking for the pair that subtracts to make a positive four. All right, so the pair this time that subtracts to make four, we're gonna have to go with six minus two, we said, makes four. All right, if this had been an addition, we'd look for the pair that adds together to make the middle number, but ours was a subtraction. All right, same idea. 4x squared comes down. We're gonna split apart that middle term, but this time we use 2x and 6x as our coefficients because that's the pair we selected over on the left. The minus three comes down. And now we have to make sure that if we combine these back together, we get a positive four. So again, we're gonna have to go with positive six minus two, six minus two is gonna get us to positive four. All right, run through factor by grouping. Now that we have four terms, first two terms have a two X in common. So we pull that out and say two X times two X gives us four X squared. And two X times negative one gives us negative two X. Moving on to the other pair. Well, I know I'm gonna to have to end up with two X minus one in that set of parentheses. So I kind of work backwards. That's how I always like to visualize this. I think to myself, 2x times what gives us 6x? Well, 2x times positive 3 
gives us 6x, and you can double check, right? 3 times negative 1 makes negative 3. All right, to finish this up, finish our factor, and we've got to go this extra step and say what's in front goes in one set, what's inside the parentheses goes in the other set, and then we set these each equal to 0, treat them like their own equations, because they are, and then solve them down. So in this case, we're subtracting 3 and then divide both sides by 2. So x is negative 3 halves. The other one, we're going to add 1 and then divide by 2. So we get x is 1 half. And those are our solutions. All right, hope this helps out as you're getting used to factoring. The AC method really, really is convenient um, that if you can factor it, we'll be able to identify the pair off to the side and you'll get it right the first time every time. So I would really encourage you to get comfortable with the AC method of factoring. It's very, very handy.